And uh, this morning, you know, I, the passage that they just read, that uh, Vivian just read for us this morning, whatever, so Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31 is a passage I used earlier this week. Um, this week, or a week ago, this Sunday, my, my aunt passed away here uh, or in Canada, in Saskatchewan, actually, and we did the service on Thursday evening here in Edmonton. It's my dad's twin sister. And uh, so it's kind of a, one of those kinds of weeks. It's been a very busy week, a very trying week. And uh, we've got all kinds of different details that we've been looking at and things like that that come along with those kinds of things happening uh, in a person's life. She's alone, she was alone, she had two children. But um, we need, I just ask that you be praying for her children. Uh, they have, she has a child that's uh, in their four, two children that are in their 40s, but um, they didn't come to the funeral this week which seems a little strange for most of us, but um, lots of stories there, lots of other reasons and things like that. So I, as I thought about this, though, I thought, you know, the reality is, if I asked for a show of hands this morning, I probably could get, to, uh, probably all of us would respond to the fact that it's been ever a time that you felt like you were struggling, or a time that you felt like you were failing, or a time that you felt in this last year that you were weary or tired or just couldn't do it, go any further, you know? There's all, we all face those struggles. We all face those times in our lives. And uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we try too often to manage or handle it all on our own and by ourselves. And it's a, it's a, it's a heavy duty struggle. We can't do it alone. In the great journey uh, we call life, there's times of joys, times of sadness, times of victory, times of defeat. And this is what makes life so exciting. But at times also so very, very draining. You know, we can, there's all kinds of things that go on around us. This week, uh, we were down at the, with the, with the faith, faith Fellowship, and we were down at the works. And it was, you know, those are fun times. You get to go do things together, you get to do those kind of things. And then on the other, the, the, the day before, I was at with my family, doing a funeral. A time that is a time of sorrow, a time of a strain and struggle with our, in our lives. Today, we all come here with different points of the journey, different times of our lives. We, we face great difficulties, or maybe you feel you're on top of the world, but around the corner might be the biggest challenge that you might never have to face in your life. Some of you have big events coming up in, in your life, like uh, a couple weeks, weddings are coming up. Stella and Calvin's wedding is only a couple weeks away. That's a huge time in your life. And the funny thing is, to me, Getting married, we'll be married 25 years our Delray this summer. August the 17th will be 25 years of marriage. And you know, it was that, that day, that one day probably was the biggest stressful day of our entire life. A day, you know, we had all kinds of things going on. You're trying to plan, you're trying to do all these things. And for Stella and Calvin, I'm sure it's the same thing. The two, two weeks is coming up, and our three weeks, we said this morning, you don't want to cut your time any shorter than necessary. And you, you know, there's lots to get done, there's lots of stress, there's lots of things, uh, challenges. And this is not the time to try to go all alone and try to be, be a hero. But on the other hand, there might be a time that you feel like you're in a rut. Things are dull around you, they're boring. They're, you just don't know, you know, you don't, you don't have a desire to do or go where you think that, you know, to, to push forward or anything. But I want to try to help you this morning to see that we can get through those times. Regardless of how exciting it might be or how dull life might be, or might be for you. How do, we do, how do we face times of struggle and hurt? How do we face times that we are stressed? How do we face times that we're not sure what's to come? Today, you know what I find in this passage of scripture that we read already this morning. The great help in understanding that. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 35. I want to read it to you again. Do you not know? Question. Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never grows faint or weary, and there's no limit to his understanding. 
understand that we have a God who fully understands. We might feel that we can't go any further, we can't take another step, but we have a God who never grows faint, who never grows weary. He's not like any man, and there's no other God like him. God's made, gods of this world are made by the hands of men and have no power or ability to provide assistance, wisdom, or help when you need them. They are no more than images created out of the minds of men. I have a, a nephew, his fiance and I had a discussion the other day about, uh, she spent some time in Thailand and, and she got to appreciate the Buddhist faith. And she says, how, she, her, her concern was, how can you say that it's, it's all wrong, it's all bad? And I had to explain to her, I said, because those things are things that men have created. And within God, in the true, one true God, the one true living God, we can have full understanding. We can have, we can have the, the creator of the whole earth on our side, working alongside us and helping us. Our God will never our God will never grow weary of loving and caring for his children. Our God will never grow weary of, of coming to us and coming alongside us when we're struggling, when we're hurting, and when we, we seem to be blowing it in our lives. Our God loves us so much, no matter how bad we seem to think we are, he's willing to come and put his arm around you or take you by the hand and help you through those struggles of life. He never grows weary or faint of us. He knows you in your heart and wants to provide for you. He knows your every desire. He knows your every, every concern. He knows your every lack of wisdom. He knows all those things about us. And he wants to be there alongside us, walking every step of the way with us. As we, as we go on to verse 29, we get this picture. He says, he gives strength to the weary. And he and strengthens the power of us. This verse I've called an unnatural source. So first we see in verse 28 an unfailing God, and in verse 29 an unnatural source. He always, he's always there. He has no limits to what he can do for you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that incredible to know? Isn't it wonderful to know that even in my failings, in my weaknesses, there's still a God who loves me, who is limitless. He is an unnatural source. He is an unfailing God. You know, as your pastor, there's going to be times I probably will fail you. See, it's great in the first few months, the first three months, maybe in the first year, everything looks, I, you know, I, I, it's all, I feel almost like a superhero because it doesn't seem like I can do anything wrong for at least a little while. But there'll be a time, I'll guarantee you, as a man, I'll fail you. It's not that I want to. It's not that I desire to. But know this, God never will. There's going to be a time when I grow weary and maybe I'll be sick. You know, a couple weeks ago, you remember I was not feeling well on Sunday morning. I had a foggy head, a, a struggling day. I had to get up here and preach. I even uh, broke out in a sweat and I had to take my jacket off. Remember that day? God's never that way with us. No matter how we struggle, no matter how bad things get, no matter how weary we are, no matter what we face, when we feel powerless, when we feel under, under, under capable, uncapable, God is never so with us. He strengthens the weary and the strengthens the powerless. You on your own will struggle with it. On your own, you'll be alone at, in a time of struggle and this, and this, this point. But God, with God, we don't need to be alone. He wants to be your comforter. He wants to be your guide. He wants to be your redeemer. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to be all those things in this, that we read of in Scripture for you, each and every one of us, if we come to Him and trust Him to strengthen us. Even at our lowest points, we can be we can be strong. Even at our biggest disappointments, He can make it, into, make it a victory. Even when we seem to have blown it and, and destroyed everything and made a mess of it all, God can turn that around and make it into something wonderful and great. Now, it doesn't mean that 
uh, if I make, make, make mistakes or if you make mistakes and there's no consequences or anything like that, but what we can do out of that, those situations, God can turn them around and make them into something that teaches us, that helps us, that helps us to grow, helps us to go further, helps us to develop more as a believer, as a disciple or, or as one who is trying, trying to walk through such a, a confusing world. You know, we think about what the world around us looks like right now. We've got a world that is confused because of the of economic stresses that are in it. We've got a world that uh, seems to, to have people doing things that I, I, they, are, they seem to be inventing evil around us. Even still, in all that, in all those struggles, in all those things, we have an unfailing God and an unmatched source that we, that we can go to because of who He is and how He loves you. Brings us to verse 30 and 31. It says, Youth may faint and grow weary. Young men may stumble and fall. Now, that's, that's, I think that's a great picture because youth uh, may, is, let's say, may faint and grow weary. You know, when I was younger, I felt like I could go forever and ever and ever and ever. I could go when I played rugby and I played football in high school. And I felt like I, they didn't have to take me out for rugby because I could just go the whole game. But now, I want to go for a minute, and I want them to pull me out for a little while, at least 10 minutes. So for every 10 minutes, I need a minute. You know, for every minute of play, I need at least 10 minutes of, of rest. It's almost like that. The other day when we played floor hockey, we haven't played for a few weeks. You know, I'm going to push you guys. We haven't played for, play floor hockey in, in another week. But uh, for me, I was glad to be saying, saying to Mason, I'll ref. Because <laughs> I don't have to run up and down that floor. That gym's not very big. But I remember playing a few weeks ago, I felt like, you know, I realized I'm not a young man. But here it says, even young men will grow weary and faint and faint. Even young men, even uh, probably even youths rather may grow may faint and grow weary, and young men may stumble and fall. So in other words, <coughs> no matter how hard we try, no matter how strong we think, we're there's gonna be times that we all struggle, that we all have times that we feel weak. Times that we don't uh, look like the hero all the time, superhero, like everybody thinks that we might be. But, verse 35, 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord, those who have faith in God, those who put their full trust in God, listen to what will happen. They'll, they will renew their strengths. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. Verse 30 and 31, I, I titled, An Unmeasurable Grace. So we have an unfailing God, an unmatched source, and an unmeasurable grace. And we put our trust in God. He'll lift us out of the mire of daily life. And I shared this story with the, at the funeral the other day when we, with the, our family and, and everything. And I, I remember a time when we were up in, in Peace River. And uh, it was a, we were having a blast. Now that's the time that I was young, very athletic, uh, I thought pretty, well, I thought it was pretty good. You know, I, I, I felt like I was, I, I was uh, uh, unstoppable. You know, I was well, 15 years old in the prime of my, my, uh, my athletic life, so to speak. And, you know, we were up, uh, up in the Peace River area, along the Peace River, and we were out on a youth camp. And um, we were running up and down the river, the river bank, and we were just having a blast. And we happened upon this spot of, uh, of soft sand and, and, and mud. And then when you first stepped in it, it went up to maybe, you know, your feet just sort of sunk a little bit. But we started to run and we jump into this pit, into this, into this soft sand, rather. And as we jumped, every time we jumped, the sand got a little softer, because it was right next to the river. We were only about maybe five, ten feet away from the river. And, then, and so as we kept, kept doing this over and over again, there was about uh, ten or fifteen of us, and we kept doing this, and kept doing this, and we created the waste, basically what was sand, our quicksand. Because at, eventually, it was up to up to your armpits, and uh, it was uh, it was it was the most fun I've ever had. Was, uh, I had a blast. We had a blast doing this. And the great thing about this, though, was you, you learned we learned something about it. Because when we jumped into this pit, it just sucked you deep into it. You know, I've never been walking in mud in your, in your rubber boots. And as you 
step, you step out of your boots because the boots are sucked into it. No, nobody else that does that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm not that bright. But uh, uh, there, you know, you walk along. I remember, I remember working on a job site one time. We were in our rubber boots, and I and I just stepped right out of my boots. I mean, there was nothing I could do. They were stuck. Well, that's what this was like. He jumped in, and you went right up to your armpits, and as hard as you tried to get out, the stucker you got. The best word. You know, the hard, it, was, it was worse and worse. You just couldn't get yourself up. And you, you'd struggle, the more you struggle, it just seems like you could try to get to the side, and you can't pull yourself up. What they had to do was you had to trust your friends were going to take you by the hand and pull you out of that mud. And, to, and it, but the crazy thing about it is you turn around and jump right back in again. Isn't that what we're like? We get into in and out of trouble. We get and we run and we, and you know we run as hard as we can into trouble. It seems like at times, and into struggles and into stress and into all these struggle things in our lives. But the only way really to get out is to let God reach down, take you by the hand. You know, it's just that it's, it was a perfect picture of how God works in our lives. You know, I often, it seems, and I had this discussion with, it was someone a while ago, it was at, uh, Chris and I were having this discussion, if it's okay to say, Chris, uh, how I, I shared with him, even as your, as your pastor, you know, as this person that's supposed to, never, supposed to have it all worked out as a minister, but there's times I run and I still jump into trouble. And I thank God that because of His unmeasurable grace and love for me, He still is willing to take me by the hand and pull me out. God is so good to us, isn't He? He's so amazing. He's so caring. So, so caring of us. So loving of us. Even when we seem to be in the pit, trapped in the quicksand of life, pulled beneath the strong, the surging tide, God can lift us out. Even when the tide seems to be just dragging us further and further out into that into the into the ocean of of, uh, of life and the struggles of life, God can pull us back to the safety of the shore. He's offering His hand to each one of us. We must take hold and place our faith in Him. We must be willing to just take hold. Trust Him. If you've never trusted Him, it's not too late to trust Him now. If you've never given Him that, given that taken Him by, fully by the hand and said, Lord, I'm going to trust you, pull me out. It's never too late to do that. And you can do it even today. It's a choice between faith and futility. Between the smell of victory or the stench of defeat. But the interesting thing about it here. It says, but though, it says, but it is up to you. It says, but those who trust in the Lord. See, it's that but. It's up to you and I to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Yes, Lord, I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. Yes, Lord, I'm tired of, of just of, of trying to make it in my own strength. Yes, Lord, I'm tired of just trying to be the hero. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to put my full trust in you and allow you to make it, help me make it through. Will you do that today is what I'm going to ask you. Will you allow God to 